Well, maybe not the best. You want me to tell you the best? <laughs> You're about to tell me the best, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So are we done talking about the buzzway? We, well, I mean, they, they, these are kind of interchangeable because we've always had this argument. Yeah, if we you have. Think buzz bait's number one. I I happen to think number one should be. You hear that weird noise in one of them? That sounds like it's way too loud. And it's almost rattling. This yep. One? Yep. Yeah. Is that and weird that is? It seems like I was like screaming into the into the mic. My left ear is kind of damaged from today, so but it, I'm cool. it's definitely it's yeah, the left yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. I'm no, no. Chilling, I'm just saying I'm we chilling. can use that one. I'm chilling right now. Damn it. Because I'll keep I'll keep that ear off. That's what I was having to do. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Fishing After Dark with the Beard and the Badge. As usual, we're having some technical difficulties here. You know, headphones not working. Badge's ears blown out from the pheasant hunt earlier this morning. Did you guys know that we went on a pheasant hunt? We went on a pheasant hunt and we Should we waxed. tell them about it again? Well, we did set the record. So I mean, I'd this say three that was podcasts in a row, but. Did we really? Yeah, every single podcast we filmed for the past three weeks. Oh, I got you. We're just really hyped up about it. <laughs> the podcast, as always, is brought to you by... Why did I stop right there? I don't know. <laughs> I thought you were about to fart or something. I had a stroke. Yeah. The podcast, as always, is brought to you guys by Carl's, a.k.a. ShopCarls.com. And they have everything on sale right now, Badge. How much? How much is the sale? <laughs> yeah. You always throw me with these random questions. It's like, what? <laughs> Look, this is the time to gear up for spring, folks. And as you guys know, Carl's is a great place to do it. Everything's on sale if you're a Carl's Club member. So go check it out. There'll be a link in the top of the description. But if wow. I can get some uh, some comments pulled up here, I'll read some. But Yeah, go ahead. Until then. Oh, that popped right up. This having service now is so crazy. It's unique. All right, so if you guys didn't know, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcast, and you can write a review. We might read it on the show. All right, I got one from Bass Trapper TC right here. Mm. says, this is the podcast. I just came here to get read on the cast. I love the content of the podcast. I'm usually listening on YouTube. You guys are the best. It's like getting together with your best buds and talking around a fire. It is kind of like that. Yeah, that's, that's cool. You and AO Rock definitely enjoyed Davy Gravy. Y'all should have more guest appearances. Come to Tennessee and do some fishing. There you go. Mm. So Tennessee's one of them places. I think it's uh, got pretty good bass fishing, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's slept on. Some it's got some good smallie fishing, too. Smallie, I think striper, too. Uh, I bet. Got one from Mr. Slab, 32, right here. It says, Norm, <laughs> Norm is Pappy. That's very true. Yes. Norm is Poppy. This podcast helps me get through my 12-hour shifts. Love it Ooh. when Poppy Norm is on. Dude, 12-hour shifts. Yep. Shout out to you, buddy. That's tough. But yeah. Um, Oh, Poppy Norm doesn't know nothing about a 12-hour shift, baby. Man, that man ain't never worked 12 hours in his life. Nah. Except on Pokemon cards. Just playing Norm. Then we got one from DCW Smith. He says uh, the subject is tongue punch. Yeah. So you, you already know where this is going. All right. Fully enjoy the podcast as a new way to connect with y'all from YouTube to this. Mm. The podcast is awesome. Just a bunch of friends with some mics. That's true, DC, DCW Smith. Yeah. You right. You are. Just some boys with a mic and not a damn clue what they're doing. <laughs> I'm I'm completely out of frame right now, I'm pretty sure. Well, did we check any of the cameras before we uh Oh, I mean, you know what? I'm going to fix it. You carry the podcast for 2 minutes while I fix it. I always carry the podcast. I got a new truck. Okay, so did did you get the truck? What truck did you get? Are you are you ready to reveal that reveal that reveal that information? It should be out on my channel. If it's not, then we'll save this podcast. But it will be okay. out on my channel within a week or two. Yeah, of I think I think it'll be out. Yeah. Okay. So okay, what hit us with it? I got a F two fifty. New F two fifty, right? New. God, what color? White. Four door. Four. Obviously. Four of them doors. Okay. Tell me about it. It's four wheel drive. It's um. This guy's. And um, it's what? It says four wheel drive. Oh, um, turbo diesel? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. She, gas? She's, she's all gas. Gas guzzler? Seven point three? Mm. At least she got the big one. Yeah, I did. God, no diesel, huh? No diesel. How much extra was the diesel? I want to say the diesel was like twelve to fourteen, and then. I don't know. I just was hearing a lot of mixed reviews. And the thing is, for me, like, I do so much traveling without towing anything. Right. So, like, today. 
Yeah. Drove. I'll drive four hours today total. Right. Not towing. So yeah. trying to figure out what the best match was and the houseboat fully done. What I anticipate will be 6,000 pounds, including wow. the trailer. Damn, that's heavy, bro. It's heavy, but... Well, with an F-250, that's what it's made for. The tow capacity of an F-250 is 12,500 pounds. Oh, yeah, to an F-250, that's cake. I mean, to an yes. F-150, you're pushing it, you know what I mean? Right, right. Like, F-250, you're good. Yeah. Get gas or diesel, I mean, of course. I mean, diesel would have been cooler, but, you know. Is it $14,000 cooler? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's that much cooler. I don't know. I don't, it's it's a couple years less of a truck payment. So. And, you, and you said earlier, I mean, the truth is you weren't looking for your forever truck. You weren't looking for, like, that truck where you walk outside every day and you're just like, damn, look at yeah. that truck. I mean, you just you need a functional work truck that's also the best of the best. That way you're not broke down the side of the road in freaking yeah. Kentucky, you know what I mean, or wherever exactly. you might be. So I think we're all with you on that one, man. I, I bet your channel was super excited when they saw it. Yeah, I... I it's kind of weird talking about it because I haven't dropped the video. But I bet you they will be, though. I think like, we're talking be about this like it's already happened because by the time y'all hear yeah. this, it has already happened. I'm so scared, to be honest with you. Because of the reaction? Up, up to this point, I've never had a lot of money or showed money on my channel. Yeah. And it's not like I bought this truck. Like, I financed it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's a it's a base model. I saw it's, one comment. You ever, ha you ever see one comment and it just kind of... Like you don't want to admit yeah. it, but it does hit you Puts a little. You in a bad mood. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. We're That's, all humans, man. People don't realize that. We we ignore a lot of hate, but you you will see some hate every now and again. It does kind of. You're just like, dang. There's still people out there to hate me. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I really thought that everybody liked me, and that's not the case. I put out the abandoned pond video whenever I did that, and mm -hmm. somebody said, "Well, this is it. I guess Ao is going to start being successful and get truck and property." I'm unsubscribing. And isn't, isn't that such like a waste of, of human energy? I'm just Why like, would you be mad when a man is succeeding? That that line of thinking is the like the weakest human emotion. It's just like yeah. you are such a weak little person, whoever you are. I do, but it put fear in me now. And I don't want to like brag and be putting videos out like, look at what I have. But right. I, I wanna I want the videos to be like the most entertaining. Like I want to take all the money I make and put a lot of it back yeah. into the channel. I think most people will see that though. Most people and like a, it's a ba it's a base trim model. Yeah. You could have trimmed that thing up and spent another twenty grand. You didn't. Yeah. You know, it's got cloth interior. You know what I mean? It's got normal wheels on it. It's like it's not. It's a working truck. Yeah. It's just an F two fifty. Yeah. It's not a platinum. It's not a King Ranch. You know what I mean? Like I think that's the kind of stuff you do when you're trying to. Right. It's no longer about getting work out of your truck. It's about like making sure people know you spend yeah. extra. That's where that whole not not everybody that owns a platinum F two fifty is saying that. I'm just saying. I feel like you know, though most people that own a platinum F two fifty are not twenty four. They've worked for it. Probably. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Probably a 50-year-old dude who's had He's a put successful in business yeah. or he did, did this or she had a successful whatever, and they just want that nice truck now. So Yeah, but it was no. just something that's been in my head. I'm like, dang, dude, I'm scared to put this out because what if all the people just like me because I'm just some right. regular dude, Yeah. and now this makes me not regular. Now I'm an irregular dude. Yeah, I think as soon as you get back to the old itty bitty and uh, being in your yard, you know, working on boats, I think it's like, hey, we're, yeah. we're back, you know. Yeah. You hadn't bought a mansion and thousands of acres and just yet, you know what I mean? <laughs> Hopefully yeah. you will one day, because, not because of YouTube, just because you made it, you yeah. know what I mean? I, w I mean, to some degree, I guess there will be people that leave the channel as it begins to grow. That just happens, man. And that's part of it, dude. That's part of it. So. 100%. Yeah, but I'm happy for you with the new truck, man. I, Thank you. I, it, it's funny because like six months ago, the mental space I was at, I would have been hella jealous, but now I'm just like happy. Like I'm not jealous yeah. at all. Because, you know, I, I want an F-250. I've been wanting an F-250 for, forever. You, you want an F-250, but I feel like you don't want the package that I got. You want a diesel no, I, yeah, want, I want the full package. You want yeah. the, like, because we're at different spots in our, you know, life yeah. and career and everything. Yeah, it's way different. Yeah, it's different. Because so, I am kind of looking like this is, this might be a truck I have for like forever truck. A while. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And like, this is what I, I want to be comfortable with my family if I'm traveling or if I'm, you know, working. Right. It's like you're settled down. It's right. like the girl that you marry. It's like, That's right. okay. Yeah. My work truck now, I'm just kind of dating, you know? Mm -hmm. We're seeing each other for a little while. Now, I'm not looking for a platinum because that is literally just spending 10000 extra for the word platinum. Yeah. Like, I ain't, I'm not doing that. I'm looking at like a Lariat 
with okay. you know, I trimmed it up a little bit just to have like like I put a winch on. Like I yeah. you know, I, I built one for fun. I've got it kind of saved just yeah. in case I ever want to pull the trigger. But it's a diesel, of course, you know, just because if I'm gonna do it, like I've told you, I'm just gonna do it. Plus I want it to last forever. And yeah. I might be pulling a camper at some point too. So it gives me some options there. But yeah, some, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. trim it up a little bit. I'm gonna get that leather interior, you know. You should. Because it's nice, it's comfortable, you know. Um put a winch on it, you know, just random stuff that costs a little bit extra, but it stuff I feel like I would use. You know what I mean? Put like a little fifth wheel gooseneck attachment on it. I should have got one for put in mine. Yeah, dude. I think I did, it only costs like 500 extra when you build it, I think. I think I I'm, I'm, I got the Ford Pass like set up. I don't need yeah. it right now, but if I ever right. have to, I can get it, I can get it put on. Yeah. I got to get like go. some other stuff done to the truck. I got to get some running boards. Yeah, I think it sits high. I didn't realize up. that. I didn't either. I think that's just how F-250s come stock. It's like their suspension. They just sit higher. Yeah. Well, they have to. They definitely sit higher. It makes me happy. I had to hop up in it. Like, yeah. literally had to hop up in I it. I always have had to climb down into my <laughs> truck. I always had a truck to where I got to where I was going. It was always the butt of a joke. And mm. I always got out and kind of looked at it and said, dang. You piece of garbage. And I was like, dang, that's me. Yeah. So, now, now it's like I pull up you. and it's not like the nicest car but it's like something i get out of and i'm like dude i worked hard for three years yeah. and i i earned this and i feel i'm proud of that you know yep it was a, dude it was a cool moment with my dad too because we got to go and he was like oh he, he went with you to get he the truck drove me to get the truck oh i bet he was he was stoked and he was walking around like taking pictures doesn't he have an f-250 he has a chevy 3500 dually oh, okay gotcha diesel, diesel. yeah but he's in that realm, that big heavy truck realm. He's a guy, yeah. He pulls like a big trailer all the time. Yeah. So, but yeah, it, it was cool though. It was cool. It was one of those moments like where I could see that he was proud of the work that I put in, and it was like seeing what That's was dope. coming from that. Yeah, dude, your dad. He's probably he's come a long way in the last since I've known you. He's come a long way in yeah. like you know seeing what you're doing and being like instead of being like wow son you're just you know this is kind of crazy. To yeah. like, wow, you're doing really good. This is awesome. Yeah. You know, he's come. I've, I've noticed that he's like, he's so supportive. Like he came around pretty quick. He did. That's he cool. Did. He's a businessman. So he's, yeah. he's smart. So. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was a cool moment for me just as a son. Yeah, dude. So. Totally. That was a cool father son moment. Wish my dad was proud of me. <laughs> no, he's proud. He don't, yeah, yeah. he don't care. He's a cool dude. Yeah. He's just chilling. Anyways, we could go down this road talking about your truck forever, but do you want to keep talking about it? Oh, is it is it uh, diesel? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> it's not a diesel. Don't no, bring I don't that want up. To talk about you it anymore. Dirty dog. <laughs> what we need to get into now, folks. That's why we you're to, here. We need to get right into the main topic because I think this is a topic. A, a lot of people are going to weigh in on this, right? I mean, this is something. This is going to ruffle some feathers. Uh. And then B. This is relevant information for the time of year. You know what I mean? This is a big time of year. Unless you live like south of Orlando, Florida, yeah. in which case your spawn's already over. Like it's been over for years. Yeah. But the rest of us, you know, probably by the time this podcast is coming out, we'll be like in the heat of it. Oh, yeah. And so this is just a, uh, this is our rendition of the top 10 bass fishing lures right. of all time. That's okay. what we're going to do today, Badge. We are going to outline, we're going to list, rank, and we're going to explain why. I like are it. you up for that? I'm so up for it, for it. Well, here's the thing, folks. So we sat here for hours trying to figure this out. Hours. Just baits, writing down all different types. What qualifies as a bait? What's a bait versus a lure, you know? What, like, there's just so many questions we had to answer. So mm. without boring you guys to sleep... You know, we like to do these ranking lists, and we like to have parameters set, criteria, if mm. you will. Damn. Man, you look really interested. I am. I hope Andrew just zoomed on your face while you were yawning just then. I, I was not. Like, <laughs> I wasn't. You were ripping a yawn. I was, yeah. It's been a long day. It's, it's late. It's been a long day. We've been. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so basically how we broke it down. So... A bait can literally be anything, right? Right. When you say the word, what's your favorite bait? That doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, um, a worm or, oh, a Texas rig or whatever. It, I think it's like a combination, right? Yep. Like your favorite lure could be a drop-shotted, a drop-shot Ned rig. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like you've got rigs, you've got lures, you've got plastics, you've got hard baits, you've got 
all kinds of stuff in that realm. So we're not going to try to put this in a box. We're just going to say, what is the best lure, right? Okay. The best could mean a lot of different things. It could be like the most enjoyable, the mm. most exciting. Yep. Does it catch big bass on average? Okay. Is it easy to use? Is it versatile? You know, stuff like that. Just general information, right? So I don't think we, don't, we need any more explanation than that. I think we should just start at number 10, start ripping through. Let's do it. And maybe kind of like talk about why we have it there. And maybe we can get a little bit of argument in there if we need to. Oh, we can we can definitely do that. Well, there's definitely going to be some arguing in the comment section. I'm looking at the list right now, and man, this is brutal. You know, when you really sit down and make a top 10 list, you'd be surprised. Like, once you're done, you, you start questioning it. You're just like, wait a second. Why would I have that at number three when I've got this at number seven? It's like, oh, man. You start getting ang- anxious about it, and eventually you just got to put the pen down and just roll with it. Yep. Right? Yep. Not this pen, the other pen. Oh, okay. All right, I'm taking over. Okay, You've please. been talking enough. This is this Thank is my God. time to shine. Thank God. Did you hear about my truck? You <laughs> you are working that mic stand over there, dog. That's all I hear is a mic. <laughs> yeah, just a mic I audio. Heard you. <laughs> Shout out to you boys at home. A little mic audio for the homies. Coming in at number 10, I want to come in and say, coming in, square coming bill. In, coming in, coming <laughs> yeah. in. Square bill? Number 10, square bill. Square bill crankbait. Okay. Crank stank. All right, talk us through it. I think this is one of the most easy baits. That came out weird. Very easy bait to throw. I think this is one of the most easy baits to throw. It's it's cast it out there, wind it in. Wind it. If you're if you're crankbait fishing, say it's it's fall time, they're eating shad and stuff, and you got a beginner in the boat, this is something you hand to somebody and they throw it straight into a stump field or a bunch of rip rap. Right next it's to some rocks or something. Yeah, it's yeah. not gonna get hung. It's gonna bounce off, make yep. some ruckus. Gonna make some ruckus. Uh, what about a color preference? It depends. depends it does what, depend. But if you got a gun on. gun to your head right now, you're gonna go out and fish right this second. Let's just say springtime because that's what we're looking at right now. Yeah, I, I'm always like a sexy shad. Yeah, it's really hard to beat a sexy shad. Yeah. Oh man, square bills are good, man. They're easy. Yeah, they're easy to throw. They seem to pretty much, they work a lot. I mean, I'm not going to say they work all the time, but they work a lot. You know, you get them near fish, reaction bite, um, white, hard yep. color to beat. I might say like a bluegill pattern maybe because yeah. it's springtime. So like maybe like a natural color when with some I, clear water. Yeah, when I was six, my dad, big fisherman, we went to the Bassmaster Classic together. Mm-hmm. And Where I mean, was it at that year? Ah. <sighs> It was in Alabama. It was in Alabama. Okay. Okay. I mean, probably Guntersville or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, Guntersville. That's where it was. Okay. There you go. Um, and I, I can't remember what company it was. I want to say Yamaha or mm-hmm. something. They were giving out crankbaits. They were solid yellow, mm-hmm. like bright yellow, like advertising crankbaits. Yeah. And I took two of them and I fished with those things. I'm pretty sure they were just like to sit on a shelf and they said yeah, the brand. Decorative. Yeah. yeah. It was like. The worst coloration ever. I pond fished with those things for yeah. years. Did they work? Too. Yeah, and I can remember vividly. Like that was my first lure that I remember. That's cool, man. Yeah, I think square bills are a lot of people's first lures, just because they kind of look like a little fish. Like if you walk down the aisles, it's not that intimidating, you yeah. know. And like I said, you just like you said, you just tie a lure, tie, tie a line to it, just chuck it out there and crank it back in there. At the yeah. Worst yeah. worst case scenario, you do that. But yep. Okay, I like that square bill coming in number ten. I feel like that's. A comfortable way to start. Yeah, I'm, some people I'm cool would obviously have it higher, but I think between me and you, we just decided you know we don't throw it a lot. That's why it's so low. It is kind of a nuanced bait because if I'm not near rock or something like that, I'm probably not going to throw it. That's yeah. just me personally. Agreed. It can work outside of a rocky situation, but that's what I always kind of same equate to a square bell. So that does kind of knock it a little bit. It's kind of nuanced. You can't just throw it anywhere you want to. If it's a grass lake, you can have problems with it because it's a treble hook. Oh, yeah. It's going to get going to dig down. So, I like that badge. I like you started off strong there. That's good. Thank you. Coming in at number nine, a bait that I'm very familiar with because the winter season just ended. That is the jerk bait. Mm. Now, you're noticing, you know, we're not going too deep into this, like a mid-diving jerk bait, deep dive. I'm not going to go into all that because no, it just doesn't boring. really need to be set in. It's boring. So, jerk bait. If you guys have paid attention to any fishing channel during the winter, I mean, this is one of those lures. Not even winter, just fall, winter, early spring, too. Yep. When the water's still kind of crisp. Hasn't yep. quite warmed up yet. There's something about that suspending jerk bait that it just sitting there. It's 
I, I swear to you, dude, and you, I know me and you haven't fished together as much this winter because you've been doing your own thing. I've caught so many good fish on jerk baits this winter. It's just dumb. Dude, like, ask, I just, ask our homie DC about a suspending yeah, jerk dude, bait. Won a huge tournament on a suspending jerk bait on top of brush piles. But color wise, I don't think you can really go wrong with this type of bait. Depends on water clarity, like you said. But if I had a gun to my head, I'd probably do like either a golden color because I like that little bit of gold in the water. Yeah. Um, or as like a, some type of a bone or sexy shad or white, right. you know, something like that. Right. Um, Guggen actually makes some really cool colors. I don't even know what they're all called because they're so crazy looking. Yeah, they some got of a them, bunch too. I love them. Um, you know, size, hook placement, don't really care about any of that stuff. I could get by with the junior one, with the big size, when the deep diver doesn't matter to me nope. just where you're throwing them. But any thoughts on the jerk bait? I love the jerk bait, man. I think I caught the most fish in a day on a jerk bait before. I would believe that. That's sound. That's like a drop shot. Like it's just something that you could just, if you figured them out, you could just wreck them. Yeah. All day. May not catch giants or anything. I didn't. I did, I did. I caught fifty fish in one day. Damn, that's good, man. And they, the biggest one was two pounds. I don't know if I ever caught fifty fish in a day. It was one of those things where it started happening. I was like, dude, I'm not stopping. Yeah, I just keep casting. Just keep going. Yeah, all with a jerk bait. Damn, that's pretty. Jerk cool. bait only. Now, it, once again, it's a little low on the list because it's nuanced. You're not going to throw a jerk bait year round. I mean, you could, but you're probably not going to. Yeah, get over it easy, too. It, it's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of working. You ain't casting and winding. You're casting and, you know, a lot of wrist action. And there are a lot of forearms getting burnt up. Yep. You know, you're getting, I don't know. It's once again, Grass Lake, it's got the same problems. You know, if you're getting, getting in grass, you may have to cut it off and tie on a shallower diver one. So it's got its drawbacks for sure, but I'm telling you folks, cold water jerk baits. I mean, I, I, I'm the one who's just now discovering it, so I'm, I guess I'm the idiot because everybody yeah. else knows. But Try it over some brush if you have Oh, haven't. my gosh. Try it over some brush. Try it anywhere, man, yeah. with the water semi-clear too. I think bass come up and get it, mm -hmm. you know? So coming in at number nine, I feel very strongly about that selection with the mm. old jerk bait. Number eight is something that I fished when I was younger, but Lojo... Dude, you've put me on this thing tons when I was your camera guy. Yeah? You kind of reignited a flare okay. for this thing. Oh, interesting. It Tell is the, the creature bait. Ooh. Guggen Trench Hog. The Trench Hog, yeah. Texas rig, simple, typically weighted, little tungsten action. Okay. Weighted Texas rig creature bait. This, they, yeah. This time of year, maybe the best <sighs> bed fishing bait there is. Man, I tell you what. The year that I started using it in springtime, the bass, they just would not tolerate it on their bed. Something or about anywhere it, yeah. near it. Creature bait, like, it just reaches so long, and yeah. it'll get in their face faster. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Big profile. Big profile, unusual looking. It's not a worm. It's not something they've seen a lot before, I feel yep. like. Yep. Yeah, dude. Trent, the trench hog specifically. I mean, this is not even a Guggen plug. This is like no BS that they have not seen stuff like that yet. These bass are not conditioned. It doesn't look like everything else. It doesn't look like every other creature bait. There is some differences. Um, so you said Texas rig, light tungsten. I'm with you on that because we do a lot of pond fishing. So you're never going to throw anything higher than like a three eighth or something like that. Even that's nah. too much for a pond to yeah. me. But what about uh, colors? This time of year, springtime. This time of year, springtime. Normal got, pond, normal got, visibility. I'd, I'd be throwing either green pumpkin or something a little bluish. Yeah, if black, I gotta go black and blue maybe. Yeah, it's hard, freaking hard to beat. This is one thing about lures. I'm not going to go off on an entire rant. There are way too many colors out there. There are. There's dude. way too many colors. Now, I, I like some of them because some of them are like really unusual. Like f for our business in YouTube, they're great. Those colors are great because we can, you know, they're thumbnails. They look really cool. They get people's attention. But practical use, there are way too many colors. I agree 100%. I, and I've been on the boat with pros, and they say the same thing. Like, they'll have, like, two, three colors in their boat. That's it. They may have a bunch of other colors, but the ones they're actually using, there's, like, one or two colors. That's yeah. it. Yeah, and they're it's not, typically black and it's blue. It's black and blue or green, green pumpkin. pumpkin or a white if it's some type of, like, a, yeah. you know, a other type of rig. Right. So, yeah, dude, I totally agree with you on that. Um <sighs> Texas rig, creature bait. I'm with you, dude, on everything you said. Drawbacks of it, once again, it's just it's not a year-round lure. It's not what I would consider it. Now, that that doesn't mean you couldn't go out to your local pond and use it all year. I'm just saying if you were fishing tournaments, you could not use it 
all year. Yeah. It's not something you keep on your boat deck. If you could only have five rods, you wouldn't keep a Texas rig creature bait on all year. You just wouldn't. Uh, it's most just, people wouldn't, I feel no. like. Maybe if you had some crazy Carolina rig and you were working Yeah, summer, summertime, yeah. yeah. Summertime or wintertime. But that's, once again, it's nuanced. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't really think that's, that's the move. I think you're going to yeah. go a little bit smaller. Out of springtime. Probably so. Yeah, something that applies across. But that's a good one, man. That's a really good one from you. And that gets me excited about number seven. Number seven. I'm just going down the list of lures that have just, like, carried me through the winter, I guess. I don't know. Okay, okay. So I went from the jerkbait at number nine. Now we're at number seven. I'm going to go with the Alabama rig. Mm. With, of course, you could put different lures on all those hooks. And I'm I'm talking about, like, a five-hook Alabama rig. Different states are different. What's legal, but... I use five hooks with paddle tail swim bait specifically. Mm. That's what I like, you know? Yeah. I've seen people put different stuff on A-rigs before, but I like the old school paddle tail swim baits, so a.k.a. like a saucy swimmer or something like that. I like it. It just kind of feels like cheating. It does, but if I'm not breaking the law, I mean, it can't be cheating. I don't know. It kind of feels like cheating. I mean, imagine <laughs> if you caught a 14-pounder. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'm just what, on, on a lake in <laughs> Texas? <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I freaking love the Bama Rig. It's freaking awesome, The Bama awesome, Rig man. has been breaking records everywhere around me. Really? Yeah. Is that what that guy caught that uh, uh, record shoal bass? I don't know if that's supposed to be public, but yeah, it is. Well, I mean, it's public now. It's public now. <laughs> John caught that. I think everybody, the word's out on A-Rigs. It's like it's not a secret anymore. No, you know, People dude. are catching massive Milliken fish. Milliken put out that crazy bag right. with the Bama Rig. John caught that. Yeah. I even, just, be- even before then, though, I think the real anglers knew. Like, Tactical Bastion's been smacking big oh, fish dude, yeah. on A-Rigs forever. My dad so, was on the Bama Rig kick years yeah. ago. There you go. I'm sure so. as soon as they came became legal, yeah. people were chucking them, but then they got banned in the tournament circuit. So that probably hurt their growth. And then it kind of had a rebound mm-hmm. effect. Yeah. With YouTube and everything, it kind of got more popular again. No, but. dude, I, th- I think the Bama Rig is, if you have not caught a big fish and you're not fishing tournaments, get you a braid, rod, and reel. Braid. Throw yeah. Bama Rig. Yeah. Don't, don't put it down. Get you a big, a heavy rod, probably a long, heavy rod, because that freaking rig is, it's heavy. Yeah. Which brings us kind of to the pat, the bad part, you know, why it's not higher on the list. And that's because it's a pain in the neck to throw that freaking thing. Dude, you, it is a workout. And you have to have like a certain rod. You have to have a certain line. You know, you can't just rig one of those up on a medium heavy rod with 15 pound fluoro. You can't yeah. just do that. You got to have a special rig that's all, that's all designed. And putting together the rig takes like five minutes too. You got to oh, put yeah. all the jig heads on there. You got to bend the wires. You got to put them all together and rig it up. They are super of work. cool though because you can really control the the water column oh, position. Oh yeah, like one hundred percent. You can really work different areas of the water with that. It's not hard either. No, yeah. no, it's not hard. especially with live scope, which we do a lot. You can just which what a lot of people do with a rigs now. Do it, you can literally yeah. watch that sucker come through the water. It's so big you can always find it. What John and Rackley did was crazy. Were dude. they just spotting fish out there and just casting at them? Yeah, man, it was it was really impressive. It was cool to see. Yeah, that's that's the strat now in Texas, man. This time of year, people are catching them, man. A 16-pounder got caught in Texas a couple, couple days ago. So crazy. Yeah, it's freaking nuts, man. This is that time of year. But, yeah, the A-Rig, folks, it's one of those things, if you've never done it, man, it's really f- a fun lure to throw. It is. It, if you can get past how much work it is. And if you get bit, man, it's just I don't catch a lot of small fish on A-Rigs. I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. I know you can, but I feel like your overall average goes up when you're throwing an A-Rig. Agreed. I mean, we've caught Agreed. so many massive hybrids. We've caught big spotted bass, big largemouth. Uh, smallies love them. Dude, I, I think they're, they're smaller A-rigs, but I think the smallies love them too. I said that joke about John with the 14 just because there's so many people that do hate on that rig. Yeah. But if you've never tried it, and if you hate mm-hmm. it, try it. <laughs> yeah, you still should. Even if you hate it, you should probably try it before you hate it. Yeah, give it a dangle. All right, folks, I got good news. We are facing one of the most awesome times in the fishing season. That's springtime, folks. we got big-time bedding bass coming up out of the depths, ready to be caught by us anglers. And Carl's has got you guys covered. Head on over to shopcarls.com. You guys will see exactly what I'm talking about. Every single lure that might help you catch your PB this spring is probably going to be on sale, especially if you're a Carl's Club member. Stuff on the website is routinely up to 30% off. We're talking about rods, reels, line, lures, the whole nine yards. And as always, it's the cheapest place to get Guggenbaits on the internet. 
So big shout out to them, as always, for sponsoring this podcast. You guys have always shown great support to us and Carl's. I appreciate that. Now, it's time to get back to the podcast. Coming in at number six, Badge, we've got a bait that uh, I am a huge fan of. You not so much, but let's see if we can talk our way through this thing. I think this is going to rile a lot of people up on both sides. I think there's okay. going to be people saying it's too low. There's going to be people saying it's too high. I got at number six, the lipless crankbait. Mm. Okay, So we did the square bill already. You brought the square bill in at number 10. But as we talked about earlier, there's so many like categories and subcategories. So within within just the crankbait realm, there's like five different types of crankbaits, Indeed. right? I mean, you got Indeed. shallow, deep, square build, you know, uh, lipless. I mean, there's all kinds of crankbaits. So lipless cranks. So here's my case. I think pound for pound, it's the one of the easiest lures to catch fish on. Like you said earlier about there's a okay, there's a beginner in the boat. What are you gonna give them? Yep. I wouldn't give him any type of plastic rig because you got to set the hook, and a beginner's not going to know how to set the hook. Yep. And you got a gut hooked fish freaking bleeding all over your boat. I mean, I'm not going to give a beginner an A rig. I'm not going to give a beginner a jerk bait. You know what I mean? Yep. I'm going to give a beginner a freaking lipless crankbait. I'm going to tell him, dude, cast this thing as far as you can into the water and reel it in. Yep. That's all I'm going to say. And he'll probably catch fish. He'll probably catch fish. Whoever's holding it's probably going to catch a fish. Gives you a great chance. So what's your what's your issue with liplesses? I know you're not a big fan. You never were, even when we used to fish together all the time. I just it's very boring. It's, in in my yeah. opinion, that's opinion based. I think it's I think you can control it better in the water column when it comes to crankbaits. It's very easy. Like when you fast crank a square bill, it's gonna it just dive. It gets down there. Yeah. But you you fast crank, it'll lift up, you can slow it down, let it fall, you can yeah. let it flutter. You can yeah. rip it, work it like a jerk bait if you want. Yeah. It's very versatile. I just, it's been around a while, dude. It has been around a while. It has been around a while. And it's just, I don't know. Just I like something with a little more action. I get it, man. I definitely get the criticism. It's just so hard to like, I don't know. And, and now, as far as seasonal, I mean, I think it's really close to being a year-round lure. It, Dude, if I had to have a bait, if I was like, you have to fish with one bait for the rest of your life to secure food for your family. Right. It'd be hard. That'd be one of them. <sighs> yeah. Because you could catch a lot of fish with that thing. Numbers. I mean, in fall, it's a killer. Right. It's a killer. I think even, you know, pre-spawn reaction, you know, it can be really good. Winter time, it can be good. Right. Shad Lake, you know, crankbait can still be okay. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. White. It's hard to go wrong with the color. I mean, gosh, it, white is such a good color on some of these moving baits. It's just so freaking hard to beat it. Any shad imitation. There's just so much shad now. I don't think it, I don't feel like it wasn't like that 20 years ago. I don't know. Was there this much shad running around? We just didn't know. I wasn't around fishing yeah. when I was four. I guess I wasn't when I was whatever old I was, but. 24. How long ago? <laughs> so Dog, don't you put me to old like that. Well, give us their number five now, man. Let's get out of this six through All ten. Right. Let's get in the top five here. Let's get excited about this. Top five, baby. Come on. We're in the top five. These are these are the nearest and dearest to our hearts, and I, I'm feeling pretty good. Starting with the jig with a crawl trailer. Okay. I like it. I, I have fallen in love with this bite in particular. It is such, such, if it's a good fish, it's, don't even feel it. Just yeah. lines moving, set jig, the Jig hook. bite's good. And the hook set with the jig, dude. You can lay the freaking hammer. hammer In fact, you kind of need to to you penetrate that to. brush guard. You got to. Big hook, too. Real good. thick hook. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good every time. It's good every time. It's good. So break us down like your ideal jig setup, like weights, what type, you know, because there's like different types of jigs. I don't know if you want to dive that deep, but. Well, I mean, I typically fish jigs in rivers. Um, I, I like to fish a three eighth when they're not generating, and I like to throw black and blue. I yeah. know a lot of people, dude. My stretch of the river, I throw black and blue. There's other people that throw green pumpkin, and we both do great. Yeah, like your stretch of the river is kind of unique because it's clear water, so you would naturally think green pumpkin. Right. But I've been with you throwing black and blue, and it was super clear, and the three pounders were just eating it up. They, you know we, what I mean? We so had a it's really like good day. yeah, yeah. So I'm with you. Like you made me a believer in black and blue jigs in clear water. Like it doesn't have to be a murky water thing. No, it was it was perfect. It was awesome. So yeah, jig with a crawl, dude. That's 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 freaking hard to beat. That's a year round lure. It is. I feel like like these the top five. These should at least they sh at least should be things that could catch fish year round. Yes. Or you know or just 
even better than that. But Jig with a Crawl, definitely a year-round lure. Some people are going to call you out, man. This is a boring lure, too. If you think a lipless crankbait's boring, a yeah. jig with a crawl trailer on the bottom going like this, just dragging it, dragging it to you. Rod tip down, take a little slack out. Yeah, it is. I get. I guess. It to, I mean, that's. I mean, I like jigs. Yeah. That's pretty freaking boring, though, man. Yeah, I know. I that's know. that's. It don't get much more boring <laughs> than a jig bite or a j- fishing just, a jig. A jig bite's great, but you know I've, what I mean. I've had better luck, and the biggest bass I've ever seen in real life came off a black and blue jig. So yeah. it's just like. What was the biggest bass you ever seen? It was like fourteen. <gasps> Who caught that? Some. Have my, you told me about this? Yeah, my buddy okay. Mitchell's brother-in-law had been fishing like twice. Might have been his first oh, time. Are you kidding me? Yeah. He caught a 14-pounder? My buddy Mitchell like fishes two, three times a week. That makes me sick. And he took his brother-in-law fishing, just be nice. Good dude. Dude, yanks 14. Out of the hooch? Yeah. Oh, my God. I know the tree. Everybody, I think everybody knows the tree. But every time I stop, I cast in there, I'm like, maybe. <sighs> They killed it. They, I mean, they they it mounted it. Yeah, yeah. They, I, I didn't powder, see yeah. it at the river. I saw it at my house because he he knocked on the door. We walked outside and they were holding a fourteen pounder in the driveway. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the jig has been known to catch massive Big fish. Inch. Big fish. It's a fun bite. Springtime too is kind of versatile. In that, oh, it's aspect. definitely versatile. I mean, you can. J- you, it's a year-round lure. I it mean, really is. You just kind of change the way you're fishing it or where you're fishing it, but it's definitely a year-round lure, especially with the crawl. That's the key. Yeah. You yeah. Know, not a swim jig or not like a right. big foot. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a jig with a crawl trailer, so really imitating that crawfish pattern. So I'm with you, man. I think it deserves to be in the top five for sure. All right, coming in at number four here, we are starting to get down to the nitty-gritty. Mm. And uh, this next lure is not going to be the sexiest thing in the world, but I swear by it. What do you think? That is a Texas rig, which is key for me. A okay. light weighted Texas rigged trick worm. Ah, okay. Trick worm. Okay. So basically, what we're talking about here is a uh, slim shake worm, if you don't know what I'm talking about. So, not a, not a big worm. Okay. Big worms are great. I'm talking about a lure that can catch fish anytime, anywhere, if you right, like. Right. And that's a lightly weighted Texas rig trick worm. So. You have been with me. You have seen what the Slim Shake Worm can do when nothing else can do the job. When you're just struggling to get a bite, none of these other lures are working. Like, we just ran down all the lures we would have tried first, right? Yep. And now we're like, okay, we're going to have to just stop what we're doing and freaking flip some worms in there. Yep. Flip a worm in there and just see, you know, just, just get a bite to get some confidence. Like, that's where my mind goes if I'm trying to get a confidence bite. I'm grabbing a slim shake on a light Texas rig. I'm gonna pitch it under a dock or hit a you know a tree, or just and just let it freaking marinate. You know what I mean? Just shake it a little bit every now and again. Yeah. Now, like I said, it's not sexy, but if you weren't if you're talking about year round bite right there, it's gonna be hard to hit a better lure year round than a than a. That's trick my worm. go-to year round lure. It's so hard to beat. Go to. It's so hard to beat. But but then again, why is it number four? You know. Yeah, true. It's not sexy. It's not really known to catch big fish. You know, it's just known to get bit. Right. It's kind of like a. It's kind of like a drop shot in that way. It's like a confidence thing, but it's not necessarily like you know. Oh man, this is going to catch a giant. Of course, slim shakes have caught big fish too. Exactly. But it's not that sexy. There's not a lot of movement going on. I mean, yeah, it's a trick worms. I know you could kind of think you could dance around if you want to, but. Um. I don't know, man. It's really that simple. It's just like, it's just not sexy. It's not what you want to throw, put it that way. Like, it's not, this is not like top 10 lures you want to throw. It's just effective. These are, yeah, the top 10 best bass fishing lures because they do what they're supposed to do Mm -hmm. and they do it well. And it's, they're fun. But this one, so this one, like, this one would get like an F grade for fun, but it would get A's on everything else. You know what I mean? Because it's just, it's freaking, you can't beat it. Yep. You know, it's just not that fun. I agree. You know, not throwing a hook set once or twice is cool on a Texas rig, but once you've done it 20 times on a on just dank after dank, you're just like, well, I don't want to set the hook anymore, boys. <laughs> We've also caught 20 pounds doing that one day, you know? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We literally caught 20 pounds doing that on a creek bed or a yeah. you know, river channel. Yeah. Well, you did mostly. I caught one big and at the end. but I think we caught 25 together. We may have. And I caught 20 of it. Yeah, that's about right. 
Yeah, that was a pretty crazy day. That was so crazy. Yeah. Colors? Any uh, trick worm colors that stand out above Green. what we've already said? Green pumpkin. Just don't leave it. <sighs> Stick with it. What well, we, we were throwing natural when yeah. we thought. Natural. It's got like a little... Um, it's got gray. Got like, like a, a bait, gray. Like a blue... Yeah, it's kind of like green top. Hence like a uh, fish underbelly almost. Fish, like a, yeah, bass so, is like a light underbelly, but the rest yeah. of it is like it is like a truly natural, like it's green a pumpkin really and cool blue. Color, yeah, yeah, I, that's one of my favorite colors, is natural. Yeah, I think I think that one's going to be hard to argue with, but you know, we're starting to get into some more exciting stuff here. Uh, top so. three, top three, baby. Mm. You want to lead us off? You want to talk about sexy? Yes. Oh, yeah. Whisper that again. I can't. That was one of those one and done. Wacky, Wacky rig. rig. <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> yeah. Wacky rig. Stick bait. For a fact. I mean, you can wacky rig a lizard if you want, you but I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, rig, nobody's going to wacky bait. rig anything else. I know you can. Don't hit me with the, I, I can't, I, I caught an 18-pounder on the, yeah, okay, I got it. But yep. you can wacky rig a freaking bandito bug if you want to. But yep. the point is, you're supposed to wacky rig a stick bait, okay? We're not heathens here. We are civilized. <laughs> yeah. What do you think we are? <laughs> Golly. Okay, continue. I just think it is one of the most, it's it's newer. And yeah, it it's is, newer. It is very effective. I think I've seen this work in Eufaula. In grass patches, I've seen it work in crystal clear water yeah. in rocky creeks. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things where if you ain't caught a fish all day, you've tried everything. Yeah. That's where I'm going. You know, you could honestly, like the wacky rig stick bait and the Texas rig trick worm are almost interchangeable at 3 4. I, I might even swap them. We might even swap them because the Texas rig gives you more versatility. I you think can fish so deeper. The I wacky think. rig's pretty shallow. Yeah, but but yeah. you could use a weighted jig head on that whack, wacky rig too. I've done that before. Use like yeah. a lightly weighted jig head and it still has like a flutter. I mean, and, it's not how you're supposed to do it. But. And you can skip docks with a wacky rig. That's true, really which well is, too. Which is dupe. Yeah. So they could be that could be interchangeable. Yeah, and they almost have like the same knocks against them. Like wacky rig's not that sexy either. It's a lot of casting and waiting. The skipping's fun. Skipping's Skipping's fun. I tell you what else is fun. It's like any kind of a weightless rig, like a wacky rig, is when you make that cast and you've made a few casts, but then you make the cast and you're not even paying attention and you either see your line get hit or you just see it taken off. You're just like, oh god. Yeah. I mean, because that's how bites happen on those weightless rigs. I mean, it's not. When you're working it, it's when you're not. Right. It's when you're not touching it, and it's just fluttering down, or it's even just on the bottom, dead sticking. Yep. And the bass just watched it flutter down, and he's just yep. like, well, I'm eating it. Just goes and hits it off the ground. Yeah, man, that's one of the first lures I learned how to throw, man. Really? I mean, you know, stick bait in general. But, yeah, I started wacky rigging the hell out of it once I figured out that you could just... <laughs> You know, just put the hook right through the middle and just cast the thing out there. Oh, a little, yeah. you know, little sharp drop shot hook or something, real, something real small. Yeah, little, yeah, little circle hook. Yeah, I mean it's freaking hard to beat, man. Yep. Um, yeah, lunker log, wacky rig. What else is there to say? Yeah, it's pretty cut and dry. Okay, coming in entirely too high on this list, but I don't care. That's, that's right. Because I'm here to get the word out. I am an advocate for this lure, and if you're tired of hearing about it, that's probably just because you never tried it or you just never caught a big one on it. Mm. But keep trying. Okay? Deep dive crankbait. Deep driver and four <laughs> foot of water. <laughs> Got to dredge up that mm-hmm. bottom, baby. Yep. No, no, no. Number two. Coming in number two, just listen to my explanation. Buzzbait. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> you I knew, knew it. I was going to slip it in, didn't Oh, yeah. You? We haven't got top water on there yet. It's true. We haven't gotten a top water yet, and people are probably just like beating the computer screen right now. But yeah. we're, at, we're in the top water zone, okay? And we're not going to leave it either. Ooh, what does that mean? Anyways, buzz bait number two. Okay, here's the thing. Almost every big, like big, big bass I've caught in my life has been on a buzz bait. Like the trophies. Do I need to say anything else? I've I've spent so much time fishing over the last five to seven years. I've used so many baits. There is not another bait on this list or that I've ever touched that I've caught more big bass on than a freaking buzz bait you've seen me do it i mean i've on my channel way back in the day yep 
I mean, every big, big, big fish, not five pounders. I'm talking about sevens and up. You know what I mean? Sixes, sevens, eights. I've seen it. Nines. Nope. Okay. Buzz baits, man. Now, every now and again, you'll catch a six on something else. But for me, every time I've come back to it, it's caught big fish. So, I mean, it's extremely versatile. It's so hard to snag the thing. You see, I, mean, I, I get that thing in some crazy places, and it does not snag. Nope. Bounce it off trees all the time. It can cut through kind of sparse grass. can stay on top of pads. Man, you're struggling over there, I am bro. having a rough time. But <laughs> you, I, you did struggling. put me on when it comes to the buzz bait. I yeah. hated the buzz bait before I worked for you. Yeah. Just because it was like a 1970s. Yeah, it's an old lure. It's what everybody always tells me. But at the same time, it works. It still I, works. I don't understand how you could take what I just said and have anything bad to say about it. Like, no. I went to places that get pounded by fishermen. And I threw buzz bait. <laughs> yep. After buzz bait, after buzz bait. And the thing just gets hammered by big fish. Bigger fish on average. Right. You know, I told you about that book that I read a long time ago. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That percent, that, like it's like a bass fishing statistical analysis book. It sounds super boring, but it was actually interesting. But it was talking about this guy who's caught over a thousand one comma zero 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 ten pound bass in his life. Yep. Can't remember the guy's name. I can never remember the guy's name, but I remember the story it's very specifically. This is real. You can look this up. And he caught almost all of them at night with a buzz bait. And that was his like he was just like, well, he's like, you know, he had a whole system figured out. And you can sit there and say, oh, it was on private water. Does that matter? Does any of these things matter? Does yeah. any, has anybody heard of such a thing like that? And this is all confirmed. Like, this is real. We're talking. These are real numbers. He just figured out that that's when the big, big bass tend to feed at night, you know, and it was just, it makes some, it makes a noise that they just don't like, you know, it triggers these strikes. It makes them eat even when they don't want to, hmm. you know? You can get it kind of behind them or if they're being super territorial, even like bed season, dude, you can get yeah. them to eat those things. Because they just come out of nowhere, just ripping through there, and they just react, you know? Now, the knock on them is they're not going to work year-round. That's the obvious knock. You know what I mean? When it gets super cold, like super cold, put that thing down. Take it from me, a guy that still tries <laughs> to make it work when it's really cold. When it's super hot, unless you come out, like, you know, early, early. in the morning or, like, during at, at night, you know, summertime, really nighttime is the best time to throw a buzz bait, but... I mean, colors, black and white. Let's not complicate this, folks. Black or white, you don't need anything else besides that. I don't care what the new color is out there. You don't need anything that's not black or white on a buzz bait because they ain't looking at the color. What they're looking at is, holy, something just hit the water. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> Am I going to eat it or not? It's that simple. Yep. So is it a little high? Possibly. Have you guys caught big fish on it? Probably not because you haven't tried it. That's all I'm saying. I want to get the kids out there back interested in the buzz bait. Yeah, it, it is. If I would say, if you're a kid and you want to bait, yeah, buzz. Pond fishing, one of the best pond fishing lures of all time. The man. best, the best. Golly, well, maybe not the best. You want me to tell you the best? You're about to tell me the best, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So are we done talking about the buzz bait? We, well, we're I mean, they, they, these are kind of interchangeable because we've always had this argument. Yeah, if we you have. Think buzz bait's number one. I I happen to think number one should be a frog. Well, that's where it is, so we're good. Well, did you agree with that? <laughs> well, we don't. Here's the thing about the list, guys. Here's the thing about making lists and rankings. Me and Badge don't agree on these completely eye to eye. We just do our best to put the list together. Mm -hmm. But that's the beautiful part about this. We put our opinion out there, and then you guys give us yours. So, so if you think topwater frog is number one, so give us give us the case. I think a little bit more control in it. You work it a little bit. Like buzz bait, cast, reel, yeah. cast, reel. It floats, so you keep it there longer. Yes. Float, just it, it feels more, I don't know, something about the pop, especially a popping frog. I love popping frogs. There's like a, like a jack-in-the-box feeling to it. Yeah, yeah. Because you're waiting for that freaking. Like every pop. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. Now, I've got some big fish on frogs. Topwater frog is probably the funnest lure yep. to throw. That's, and, that's what yeah. gives it a huge advantage on this list. Trying to learn that hook set is incredible. I think, you know what, you just touched on something that really is why this is such a good lure. And that's why, it. I don't know if it's not, it should be number one, but based off this, it might be. 
because your hookup percentage is so low on a frog, and it's not like low, but it's lower than like a Texas rig or whatever, because you're gonna like, the old rule used to be like losing half. You know what I mean? Yep. Like half the blow ups. Like it might even be lower than that actually. Could be. But like for me, it's always been like you know miss one catch one right. and i'm good with that a lot of times you just miss a freaking frog yep. you know what i mean which happens a lot which is why i like the buzz actually better because i feel like they don't miss that as much but that's another debate for another day just frog versus buzz bait uh, i think because the buzz bait moves faster it's harder for them to you know miss it if that makes sense i agree but yeah so topwater frogs probably the most exciting it's it's probably it is a little easier for a beginner because a beginner is going to have a problem with a buzz bait Buzzbait, you got to cast, and then you got to be ready to reel as yeah. soon as it hits the water. As soon as it hits, because if you don't, then it's going to sink, and then you got to really reel really fast to get it back on top of the water. Now you've already burned like twenty feet of water, probably freak the fish out because the thing's rolling around underwater. So a frog, you get to cast it out there. You got a bird's nest, it's fine. It lands, just sits there, waits for you to pick the bird's nest yep. out, and then you're, it's still there. You hit it. You can't really work a frog wrong. You know what I mean? Any no. kind of a twitch is going to give it a lifelike look. Yep. You know. Big fish definitely hit frogs. I mean, one hundred percent. Top water, I think, produces bigger bass on average. I don't think you can even argue that fact. I don't know. I don't know why, but I love it. I'm so glad <laughs> it is that way, dude. Yeah, but while what I was saying about the the hookup ratio is, it makes it more meaningful when you catch one. You know yeah. what I mean? Because it's harder to land fish with a top water frog. So because of that, that extra layer of difficulty. Oh okay. shoot! <laughs> there it is. That extra layer. Because of that extra layer of difficulty, I feel like it's more rewarding when you catch, when you actually get the fish in. Yes. You know what I mean? Plus, you're fishing such thick cover with that frog, probably. It's just hard to get that bastard out of there. It is. So, so where hard. are you going to throw a frog? What are you looking for to throw a frog? Man, if, if you're fishing a pond, find the dam or the deepest area, <laughs> okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I want you to go to the corners of that dam mm -hmm. first thing in the morning or late evening. Interesting. Fish those corners because the big fish, I'm telling you, man. Yeah, the dams? Damn. But so you can't always get up on the dams, though. Find a way. Okay. Trespass. Frick that horn, that giant No, horn. no, no, no. If you're fishing ponds. Oh, ponds. Got you. Yeah, corners dog. of the dam. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. No, that's that's where I've always had my luck is fishing the the deeper, deeper water kind of coming up to like some grass or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, shallow water, deep. I mean, don't don't throw in the middle, beat the bank. Yeah, it's, it's a bank, it's a good bank fishing lure. Um, it can get in places that a lot of lures can't get. Amen you know? to that. I mean, it can get into some grassy, thick stuff. It sits right on top. Lily pads. It's just hard to beat in lily pads you're already fishing it on straight braids so you can yoink those fish right out of that heavy cover just mint it's meant to be exciting it's built to be exciting it's addictive that yeah. that strike and then like setting the hook and they're actually being something there you know what i mean because you've set the hook a million times like i have and the frog just comes flying yep you know because they don't have it but when you swing and connect and you realize you, I mean, it's just such a cool feeling. It is unreal. It's so cool. And you get them and they've got the fricker like deep in their throat. Yeah, just it looks stuck so in there. crazy. It's like, man, they choked it. It's it's a great feeling, man. It is. It, it's got to be the probably the best feeling is catching a fish on top water. And then the frog is just such a rewarding. That jack in the box is a good way to put it. Because yep. it's so much slower than a faster mover or like a plopper or something like that. It's it just triggers the bite, and it's just such a freaking God. You're right. It is just out of nowhere. It's get your freaking heart going, man. Pounding. <laughs> you make a cast a hundred times, and the hundred first time you get freaking smoked, and it's like it was all worth it. You yep. know. Jeez. Well, I think um, we freaking did that list, man. We did it. Did it dirty in a good way. Yeah. Look, guys. I know everybody's not going to agree with us, but look, what can I say? I mean. We're a couple of dudes here with microphones. I mean, what do you expect? That's right. You guys are listening to this while you're at school and stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm running off three hours of sleep, too, so if you can't even half of what I said was just deliriousness. Well, that's fine. Yeah, we did put two top waters in the top two, so. Well, <laughs> it's America. Well, this is America. This happens sometimes. No, I like it, man. I like the list. I think the only thing I would change is flip three and four. 
to put the Texas rig trick worm number three and wacky rig stick bait number four. I, w- I would do the same thing. I don't. I don't think I would change anything else. Though. I like. I like this. I like buzz bait being two. I know I've pissed a lot of people off with that. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. I'll, I'll carry that to the grave. The buzz bait. I just. I think people sleep on it day in and day out, and I'm just not going to stand for this blasphemy. Don't. Don't I'm let not that going happen. To. I'm not going to do it. It's too good of a lure to not be on people's top ten list. Yep. <laughs> what do we? Can we think of any like glaring omissions? Like, did we just? We probably missed something like super swim obvious. Baits. Didn't really talk yeah, about. Yeah, we didn't talk about swim baits. We love paddle tail swim baits too. That's a thing. Yeah, swim jigs. Here's the thing, though: when you make a top ten list, you're gonna have to omit things that you like. That's the problem. It's like coming up with like the top ten like football player or basketball players of all time. You're going to have to slight a bunch of great players to get that top 10 list. So this is the same thing. For we sure. could have made a top 100 list and had 100 things that we like to throw. Nope. But this was the top 10. Boom. 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 Yeah, that was pretty good, man. Yeah, thanks. I yeah. like it. Carl's. I don't know if we helped. <laughs> I don't know if we helped anybody in the springtime, but, you know. Yeah, throw 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 a trench, trench hog. hog. Yeah, go throw a trench hog. Go throw a trench hog in a bed. If that doesn't work, what would you do then, Badge? I would take all my clothes off. Obviously. <laughs> then I would throw yourself a in the ch- bed. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Use the old trick worm down there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there it is. Hey, yo, there's that. There's yeah. that last second sexual innuendo <laughs> yeah. just slipped in there. Yep. It would not be a good pod without it. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on. What else are we missing? We have to be missing like one like glaring We're not missing thing. anything. Swim bait. You just want to go home. No, the I people don't. People see right through this bad. They no, just want to go home. I want to keep podcasting. We have, we have three solid not, minutes right now. I'm not done. <laughs> You're definitely done. <laughs> no. Nah. Like, no, I don't regret anything. We're good. This <laughs> list is perfect. <laughs> you don't quit. Don't quit this podcast. <laughs> Right now. <laughs> um, We're going to keep this podcast going for another three hours. Let's run another list. Yeah. Let's just delete the, this, this list and just come up with a whole new one. <laughs> yeah. Let me look at all these le- these baits back here and see what we missed. Spinner bait. Spinner bait, chatter bait, which yeah. we are just the biggest <laughs> doofuses in the world. <laughs> Holy smokes. Dude, wow. wow. <laughs> we fricked up big time, bro. <laughs> Possibly... <laughs> the biggest baits, the greatest omission ever. of all time. Yeah. Spinner baits and chatter baits. You know, I'm gonna say something on this on that subject. I'm gonna say something. This is gonna upset a lot of people, and maybe even you too. I don't care about spinner baits and chatter baits anymore. Is that our end of the? No, I just I don't <laughs> care. Any. I I just I, okay. I think they were great. Yep. Um, I think they still work for. Thousands of people. Nope. I just don't care about them anymore. I haven't had fun throwing them in a while. Yeah, I just, I don't, I, I, I look, I look back here. I'm like, okay, you know, what, what would I go do right now if I could just rig up five lures? I don't think I'd rig up a spinnerbait or a chatterbait. I just, I, I get, dude, I'm not saying they're not good lures. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying like the whole hype, especially spinnerbaits. You know what I mean? I feel like spinnerbaits is yeah. just... Talk Agreed. about like old technology. Agreed. That, that was awesome. Don't get me wrong. It's awesome. I just don't, I don't get it anymore. I, I could throw three different lures I'd rather throw than that and kind of get the similar action. Now, chatterbait's a little bit harder for me to say that because chatterbait's kind of came along and yeah, it was think, just like better think, than a spinnerbait. You know, I it's think more chatterbait compact. could be one of the best baits. Chatterbait's you know, hard to argue with. It's, it's up there. But I, I can't really, believe we forgot wire baits. We're a bunch of well, we didn't because a buzz bait's a wire bait. We just forgot the two <laughs> yeah. most popular wire baits in the history of the world. Over there was like, oh my gosh! I knew we were forgetting something, but it, once again, it wouldn't be a good top ten list unless we f- forgot something. I might could kick off like the square bill and put spent or a chatter bait on there or something, but yeah, no regrets, man. No regrets, baby, dude. Who cares, man? It's a list. We did our best, folks. I want to hear y'all's top ten list in the comment section. I want to see them rather. I want to see a good one. The best. I want to see a better one than we just made, which will be impossible to do, but you guys should take a shot at it, though. Yeah, doubt it. Yeah. Probably shouldn't even try. <laughs> <laughs> one thing you guys should try to do is make sure you're subscribed to this channel as well as following us on all the streaming platforms. Leave us a five-star review. We might read it on the show. We want to do a special thank you, guys, 
to all of you who entered the giveaway last month. Really appreciate you guys really showing up for us on that giveaway. You guys kicked ass as usual. Yup. Pretty much the best freaking subscribers out there, man. This podcast audience is different in a good way. These people are freaking awesome. Love you guys. Much love. Peace.